we found the link between sleep apnea or breathing disorders and sleep in one side and cardiovascular diseases on the other side. We showed that sleep apnea is a risk factor for hypertension. And again, this uh, uh, steer a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, uh, interest in our work because uh, um, if indeed sleep apnea is a risk factor for cardiovascular diseases, if you treat sleep apnea, you can reduce the uh, um, risk of uh, having cardiovascular disease. And in the last 10 years or so, we focus on uh, the mechanism that underlie the link between the fact that you stop breathing during sleep and cardiovascular disease. And I was lucky enough to be married to a biochemist, uh, my colleague for uh, so many years and now my partner in research. And what we showed in the last 10 years is that sleep apnea is one of the major causes of inflammation within the arteries, within the blood vessels. We are now working on the cells themselves. So what we do, the patient is sleeping in the laboratory. In the morning, we take a blood sample. We isolate the blood cells and we investigate what happened to the blood cells that are exposed to the apneas in the patient's blood vessels during the night. And uh, uh, just imagine a patient that stopped breathing 300, 400 times, his oxygen level in the blood is going up and down 400 times every night. So what we found out, that there is a change in the function and the morphology of the blood cells during the night. So they become more attached to each other, more attached to the walls of the vessels. And this is a process that uh, uh, the medical uh, uh, community called atherosclerosis, blocking of the, art, of the uh, uh, blood vessels. And uh, if this goes on a night after night, for hundreds of nights, it can cause heart attack, stroke, uh, 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 peripheral uh, blocking of the arteries, etc., etc. So this is our focus in the last uh, several years. We and we revealed several mechanisms that explain why this process takes place, what are the different actors in this uh, nightly drama, if you wish, and how treatment can reverse this process. We discovered, again, surprisingly, that elderly patients who survive the age of 65 or 70 with very severe sleep apnea uh, do not die because of the disease. In fact, they live longer than the general population. And this led us to hypothesize that this intermittent decrease in oxygen level can serve a long-term adaptation in certain individuals. It prepared the heart for a heart attack and decreased the damage because of heart attacks. The question is, who are the individuals that develop this mechanism? What is the underlying biochemical process that subserve this function and how we can use it for the benefit of the patient.